so today we are going to talk about uh, a bit of a a bit of a black art really which is how to get dynamic product ads or um, a catalog feed into into Facebook from Shopify so Shopify will automatically feed your products into a Facebook catalog and then you can run dynamic uh, product ads or dynamic retargeting ads in Facebook based on the products that that people have looked at. So if they go onto your Shopify store and they look at, uh, in my case, I sell lingerie, so maybe they've looked at a, a red bra, uh, then it will retarget them uh, with an advert for a red bra, which is which is what they've looked at. So obviously that is more targeted than, than just throwing random adverts at people with the, with a kind of shotgun approach. So typically you would use um, that, that, those retarget ads with, with another type of ad. So you would have an advert that drives traffic to your store. People would then look at the various products in the store and then they would be retargeted at some point. Obviously, if they didn't buy the product, um, they would be retargeted on what they've looked at because they're, they're more likely to buy those things. Um, Facebook over time with the new custom audience pixel will learn what people look at and they will learn what people have bought so it's it, the, Facebook will understand what your best selling products are and it'll dish those ads out more often than uh, just, just adverts or anything on your store um, if you use something like retarget app or one of the third party retargeting applications um I have a bit of an issue with that because I've been using my custom audience pixel for some time and built up, you know, Facebook has built up quite a knowledge about how my particular audience works um, and the and the behavior pattern of people on my store. Um, retarget app comes along, sticks in additional pixels, and has to learn that all over again. Um, and also I've got two sets of pixels on my store. Um, so it's... It, it, you know, from the day you install that, it has to go through a whole load of learning again to learn what what uh, is effective, and also they don't report information very accurately, and I, and I don't like that. So I, I like accurate information, and I like to be in control of it and master of my own destiny. So the first thing we're going to do, in and this might seem a bit weird to do that, is we're going to install the Google Shopping app for Shopify. Uh, and what that does, it will extend the product schema of your products and add in additional fields. So if we pick the uh, Alicia baby doll, there's there's things here that uh, are not in the standard product until you add this app. Now, the main one for Facebook retargeting we're interested in here is the Google product category. So when we've installed the app, we have to go through our products and set what the equivalent category is in Google Shopping. Now, bearing in mind what this feed is, it is for Google Shopping. That's something that you need to do anyway um, if you want your products to be listed in Google Shopping. So we've got other things here, the MPN and um, the condition of new gender is for female. In my case, it's lingerie. The age group is adult, kids, infant, newborn, or toddler. Well, yeah, lingerie is adult. It's not for toddlers or kids, really. Um, some other things here, AdWords, grouping, uh, all sorts of us, us stuff that are specific to Google Shopping, we add in here. Um, now, a gotcha that I think is coming is Google have said on the 16th of March, I think it may be May, but I think it's March of 2016, they require a barcode uh, or an MPN. And if you don't have that, you don't get listed. Easy as. So uh, at the moment, you can click to tell Google to ignore it. But very shortly, without this being filled in, it's not going to list it. So if you have barcodes or you have um, GTINs, global trade identification numbers or something like that, put put that information in here. Um, if you don't have them, you can go to eBay and buy 5000 for about 20 bucks, uh, and just you know upload them and put them into your store. So that's the first thing you need to do is get the Google Shopping installed. And make sure you have the, glue, the, sorry, the Google product category listed for each of your products. So in my case, clothing and accessories, clothing, underwear and socks, lingerie. And that's consistent for all of mine. They're all lingerie. Uh, you can break it down if you want, you know, bras, pants, whatever. But I, I just go with lingerie. So that's the first thing. Get the Google Shopping app, install it, fill in the fields for all of your products. Next on the list, 
is uh, this is another free app which is by Flexify. It's Facebook product feed. Uh, and what this will do is it will create on your Shopify store a feed of all of your products in the correct format that Facebook requires for a feed. Now, another way of doing it is you can export all of your products into a CSV. You can import them all into Facebook. That's that's real ball ache. And because I'm naturally a lazy person, I just want it to work. And as I add new products, I want them to appear. I want it all taken care of. I don't want any manual steps. I just want it all automated. Um, so we install this app. It tells you your feed is available at this URL. Uh, there's a few other things here. Sync search engine optimized titles and descriptions. Well, I want that because I go through and I hand code for SEO purposes uh, all the proper SEO optimized descriptions for my products. So I kind of want that. Use the product categories as set with Google Shopping app. Now that's really important because we've just gone in and we've just set all those categories so we want to use them. Uh, if you want, you can select a particular collection or whatever to sync, so maybe there's some things you don't want syncing. In my case, I want to sync all of them. So let's go over to Facebook and to Facebook Business Manager and have a look at our feeds uh, and see what that looks like on the Facebook side. So the first thing we need to do is add a product feed, or in my case, I've already got one, so I'm going to click on it here. And we should see uh, our feed, and it's telling me I have 1,100 products in the catalog, so my feed is nicely synced. Let's go over here to product feeds. So here's my feed. There's a few errors with it, which I'm, I'm not particularly worried about, and I'm going to go to feed settings. So I'm going to give my feed a name, it's called Katie's Feed, set my default currency to GB pounds. Um, and here you'll see a URL for the feed. Now, I picked that up from here in my uh, Flexify Facebook product feed app. It says grab your feed app, and it gives you a URL. So you take this URL, you go over to your Facebook feeds, and you paste that URL there. Uh, and it's on a schedule. My schedule is daily at 6 o'clock. So every day at 6 o'clock, uh, it will pull all of my products over into Facebook. Now, one of the little things that I've done is I've added on the end of it, no variance. So the reason for that is my products, if we take a bra, for example, it's got 34A, a 34B, a 34C, a 36A, and so on. I, I don't care that they've looked at a particular size or a particular color. Um, I just care that they've, they've looked at a particular product. So. I don't want to display bra in 34A. I just want to display the bra that they've looked at. So I've, I've included no variance on here. Uh, that will reduce your feed quantity ridiculously. So I've gone from 5,000 variants down to about, about 1,100 because I just want to show the product, not all of the variants. Now, in your case, a variant could be a color. So it could be a product in red, a product in blue, a product in green. On my store, I, that will be three products. So I have the product in blue, all of the sizes, the product in green, all of the sizes. So the, the colors are not, not really relevant to me, but to you they might be. Uh, you can hit the sync button. It'll go, go ahead and fetch those. Uh, and you can add as many feeds as you want. So if you've got multiple stores but a single Facebook account, you can add product feeds from both stores. Uh, and you can manage those adverts for multiple stores within, within Facebook from that. So we've got a few errors here. If we have a look at what the errors are, it, it tells you that, that things are missing. Uh, and if I go to products, hopefully it's going to show me some of the products here. Uh, so here's, here's all of the different products that it's pulled across from my Shopify store. So now we have the Shopify ID, the URL, the price, whether it's in stock or not. Yeah, lots of real interesting detail is now coming across into Facebook, which previously we, we didn't have. We didn't have any product information at all. Now we do. Uh, I've created some product sets. Now... I'm, I'm stabbing a guess here and thinking that the more information that you give Facebook, the better it is able to target customers. So rather than just have one feed of um, all products or everything in stock with you know 1,100 items here, 
I've broken it down by manufacturer. So this manufacturer is 89 products. Um, this manufacturer is 23. Um, and I've also broken it down by product type. So briefs, hold-ups, stockings, nightwear, um, tights. And it knows which product is in which of these groupings. And a product can be in, in multiple groupings. So, so my thought on that is that if Facebook understands that a user has looked at products in tights, you know, they looked at two or three products that is in this grouping, it, it is more likely to display to you products that are in, in the tights grouping than, than just general lingerie products. So I, I don't know that for sure, but I'm guessing there is a logic in Facebook's back ends that will target more specifically products if it knows the, the more granular groupings of those products. So you know, if you're only looking at night dresses, rather than show you products from everything that I've got, it's just going to show you things from the nightwear collection because it understands more granularly what those products are. So I don't, I don't know that, but that's that's a pretty strong guess, I think. Uh, product events here. Where are we going? Product feeds. What, what I'm trying to find now is to try and find some errors that are thrown up on my feeds. Uh, and I want to show you how to debug some of those errors. Okay, here we go. So this is telling me um, on the purchase, so this is on my purchase pixel. So this information in my store is um, on the thank you page. It's the additional scripts on the thank you page that fire this pixel. It tells me that the content ID parameters are missing 80% of the time. And the, the reason for that is they, they weren't there and I've just added them in. So if I go back to my store and settings and checkout and look at the script that is firing on checkout, uh, you will see I have in additional information in my Facebook script. So if I scroll down to it eventually, so here's my Facebook additional code. So I've got the usual track purchase, subtotal price, money without currency. I've got, got all the usual stuff. So, th so that tells Facebook that a purchase has been made. It tells Facebook how much the purchase was and which currency. It doesn't tell Facebook what you've bought. It just tells Facebook there's an order made. And here's the customer. So adding additional code in here, I've now got the order number. That's my other phone going. Let's cut that off. Uh, I've now got the order number, and I've got a, a for next loop in here that lists all of the content IDs for the item, the variant ID, and some other stuff there going on, and the, the content type of product. So now not only does it know that there's a sale being made, but it knows there's multiple items made in that sale, you know, product one, product two, product three, to, to make up the order. It knows what those products are. It knows the variant ID of those products and the individual cost of the product. Now, again, with Facebook targeting, it knew a customer made an order and bought something. We didn't know what they bought. Now it does. So, in terms of dialing your pixel in, you know, if I'm selling lots of shorts, for example, it knows that. And when it comes to displaying adverts, in theory, it should display product ads of shorts because it knows more people are buying shorts. And and when it analyzes the type of person buying those shorts. It now knows the, the type of person buying the product and the type of product that the person is buying. So we're now dialing in, um, in a granular way, our advertising. So it's, it's, it's becoming more targeted and more specific. So ev even if you don't use retargeting ads, it makes sense to add those extra fields in because Facebook can better use that information to, to drill those ads down into who to advertise to. Uh, are we looking up here and we see the add to cart and the view content um, is are also missing some parts. They're missing the content ID and the content type parameter. Well, I use Google Tag Manager and the reason it is missing that information is because Shopify cannot pass that information to Google Tag Manager when it fires the pixel because they're liquid variables and Google Tag Manager doesn't support that. Um, and then Google Tag Manager, because it doesn't know what they are, can't pass them to Facebook. If you're not using Google Tag Manager and you're hard coding the Facebook code into your store, you should be able to include those additional parameters. So on the view content and add to cart, it, it knows the product, the variant, the cost of the product, that kind of information. Um, 
Now, in terms of doing a Facebook retarget, you, you are likely to want to retarget add to cart and view content, not so much people who have bought. So people who have looked, maybe added it to cart, but they didn't buy. They're the people you're going to want to retarget. So at the moment, Google Tag Managers not do that with Shopify. Um, I am maybe two days away from fixing that, and I'll and I'll post the code here for the GTM users that that do that. So so GTM actually supports that. But at the moment, if you, you if you're using GTM, you won't have that. You can have it in the purchase, but you can't have it in view content or add to cart. Um, and that is real key information that uh, that you use to build up a retargeting ad because it needs to know the product to show the person and it doesn't have that information. Uh, so that's kind of where I am with it at the moment. I, when I get the additional code with, with GTM, I'll post that. These errors will go away. Um, and then what we should be able to do is to go into Facebook and do um, product ads, just, just general ads that are based on everybody else that's viewed the store. So my general kind of shotgun ads are more targeted and then I should be able to do retarget ads based on products. So they viewed a particular product and within Facebook, and I'm not using retarget app or any other kind of third-party app, within Facebook, I am able to retarget those people. Now, a huge benefit for me is they're using all the information built up in my pixel over time. I'm not using retarget ad pixel or a third-party pixel because so I've got a third-party app installed. I'm using my own pixel that has all of that information built up over time. So it should convert better, should be more accurate targeting. Um, so that's that's where I am at the moment. As soon as I get the GTM uh, side of it done, I'll post the additional code. But th th there's one one variable I'm missing uh, at the moment, which is, uh, is uh, the content ID. So basically the product ID parameter. I'm not, I'm not able to pass the GTM today, but it should be in the next couple of days. Um, watch this space we'll see what happens but you know I, I should reasonably expect to see my return on investment in my facebook ads rocket because we're targeting the right people who are interested in specific products so uh, i will keep you posted